Hello and welcome to this video. Have you ever gone and looked at your customers and just thought they'd make no sense whatsoever, especially when it comes to overdue invoices? Well, in this video, we're gonna look at how to look at that information and more importantly, how to make sure it's correct and how to correct it if it's not. Stay tuned. My name is Aaron Patrick, I'm a Chartered Accountant, Certified UK Trainer and also that QuickBooks chap. In today's video, what we're going to do is look at how customers and overdue invoices can be looked at properly. What we're going to do is have a look at how to first of all make sure we're confident with that data and then we're going to understand exactly what that means to our business and how we can then look at amending anything if it's not right. So let's have a look at QuickBooks and let's see how our data looks like at this point in time. Well, first of all, I'm gonna concentrate all my energy on this dashboard. I say a lot of times about this, but the dashboard's so important. The dashboard is giving you confidence in your data. Now, when you go into QuickBooks for the first time, you are sent directly to that dashboard. And every time you go in there, please, 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 make sure that you look at how that data is in QuickBooks. You should be able to have confidence in that dashboard. You should be able to understand what's going on in your business and you should be able to take relevance to what QuickBooks is saying to what's happening in the real world. That's what the dashboard's all about. It's about giving you confidence in the data and telling you if there's something that may need to be brought to your attention. And that couldn't be any more important than it is now. So as soon as we go into our dashboard now, we have the option to put on a cash flow forecast, telling us what's happening in the next 90 days. Well, that's so important to us. That's gonna let us know if we've got any problems or any issues going forward. But we can only have confidence in that data is if we've got that data correct as well. And that's what we're gonna look at today. We're gonna to look at it and we're gonna to understand together if our debtors are correct and if we're 100% happy with it. Because in the real world, in this sample data, I'm expecting a couple of grand worth of overdue invoices. That's how much I know I've got still to come in and I know I've got to chase for that money and try and get that money over to me. But there's various situations where even though you've got confidence in the rest of your data, so your bank might be correct and everything else might be correct, you still might be in a position where that overdrawn and overdue invoice screen just doesn't feel right. That's what we're gonna look at now. We're gonna look and see exactly how to fix that, exactly how to get confidence in the data so that you are in control of your business. Let's have a look. Well, on this dashboard, it's telling me about this wonderful cash flow and telling me what's due coming forward, but let's make sure we've got confidence in that data. When we look at our bank account, we can see we've got information here and here and here telling me that my banks are all up to date and everything's in the right place. So I'm getting confidence as I go along. My problem is though, is when I look at my invoice section and I look at my overdue, 62 grand seems quite excessive, especially when I was expecting a couple of grand or so. Now, the best thing about the dashboard is from here, I can actually look straight into that data and find out exactly what the issue is. So if I click on this 62,000 pound here, here it's gonna tell me what's going on. Well, it's telling me I've got all these items that are overdrawn and I can go through line by line by line and making sure I'm happy with them. And that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna look at the data and then think of scenarios or look at scenarios at which we might have made a boo-boo. So the first one I'm concentrating on here is the biggest one, 48,000 pound on the 31st of December. Now I don't know about you, but if I had 48,000 pound that was overdrawn, I'd probably be wanting to get that money in my bank account as soon as possible. We've left it overdrawn for almost a year now. And if we're leaving it for almost a year, there must be a reason for that. We must be confident that that has either already been paid or there's other reasons for it. And in this case, what's actually happened is as follows. 48,000 pound, has it actually been paid in? Well, I can look in my bank account just to make sure. So I go to banking, I go to my business account, and I'm interested in categorizing this. And as I put Wells into here, what you'll see is that I have 48,000 pound due to me. And we've already had that money in. It's been paid in 11th of 11th 19. And it's been put as a deposit. So let's have a look at where it's been posted to. Well, in this case, it's been posted directly against my debtors account for Joe Wells. It's gone against debtors. And what that means is if I go to customers and I type the word Wells in, you'll see I've got two different accounts. And sometimes this is quite common. Sometimes you'll find this because what you've done is 
you've been paid in a certain name and you've just allocated that for now because you, you're just going to find it at a later date. But you've actually invoiced them in a slightly different name. And in this case, they're both Joe Wells. It's just one's his limited name and one's his personal name. So he's paid us and he's put a reference for Joe Wells when it was J Wells Limited, which we were looking for. And basically they match each other off. So 48,000, 48,000. I have two options here. I can undo the original transaction and post it against the right area. It's probably the cleanest and easiest way of doing it. So you go back to your bank, you press undo and you allocate accordingly. But if I've got lots of data in each one, so imagine I've been doing this and they've been paying month by month by month and I've just not noticed until now. Well, if that's the case, there's a quick and easy way to actually merge the two. For me to merge both of these transactions or both of these elements, all I do is I get the name of the first one, so in this case, Joe Wells. So this is the one I want to keep. This is the one I know is correct. That's what my invoice says on it. The second Joe Wells. So what I'm gonna do is jump in and edit Joe Wells, and I'm gonna override that display. And what I've done is although this is Joe Wells, I've overridden the name to be exactly the same. I remember in QuickBooks, you can't have two of the same names. So look what happened when I press save. When I press save, I'm gonna be asked, the name is already in use, We would you like to merge the two? So as soon as I press yes, data from both of them have gone together. Now Joe Wells Limited is showing that we've got that item in there. And all I need to do is press receive payment. So now the balance is cleared, but the next thing is we've got to now understand that we're still showing overdue 48,000 pound. So what I wanna do now is press receive payment. I want my amount received to be zero because both transactions are already there. Just be mindful of the date, make sure it's kind of in line with when you would have received the original payment. But effectively, because I've got a tick against my invoice and a tick against my deposit, they both come to £48,000, meaning I've got zero to receive, but as soon as I press save and close, that has now gone down to zero overdue. So there's two things to learn there. The first one is that merging option. So if you have got data in one customer and data in another and you need the two to merge, remember you override the name. And the other one is if you've still got an overdue item, but you can see the payment there, then we just need to allocate it. And the way you do it is you go to that invoice that's still outstanding, you press receive payment, and then you allocate it accordingly. So that's helped drastically. If I jump in my dashboard now, I'm much further down. I'm now at 14,000 pound. So what's happened with some of these others then? Well, one of these may be that you've been paid, but you've been paid for it in a personal sense, or you've been paid by cash and you've just not recorded them. Well, in that case, what you need to do is you need to still say that they've been paid, even though they've not come through your bank account yet. And you need to pay them against your director's loan or your drawings account, depending on which one you use in. Now, remember when I created a director's loan account and a uh, or a drawings account in this one, I made sure that it was a cash account. And when you do a cash account, it means you get to interact with it. So here, I'm gonna say that this one, this one, and this one. So I'm gonna receive payment against Aaron Patrick. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna receive payments against all of the transactions that are overdue, because I'm confident that that's come through. Now, normally you wouldn't do it in such a high amount, but let's just go with it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my deposit to account, that's the most key part of doing this exercise, your deposit to account is the right account. I'm saying I've definitely paid for these transactions. They're actually my own work, so I've paid for them. Uh, I've, I've invoiced myself, but then I've paid for them, um, and I want them against my director's loan account. So at that point then, because it's a personal, it was paid for personally, or received for personally, I then need to save and close that transaction. And now all of those have gone through. So in reality here, what we do is we make a payment. And when we make a payment, we need to change that deposit to. We need to go to our direct loan or drawings account to indicate that it's been paid via a personal method. So we've had the money, it's just not coming to the bank account yet. Finally, what about if it's legitimately overdue and it's just you've not chased for it yet? Well, from this screen, we have that option. Drop down the option here and we can even send a reminder from this area. So from here, I can press send reminder press send and that email will be sent off. And now we even have the option to automatically save. So save time and create automatic email, notify your customers when it's time to pay and invoice and schedule emails. You can then create 
And from here, you have auto invoice reminders you can turn on and you can set the reminder to go automatically. Saving you time and making sure that they are being received, especially if you've just forgot to do it. Now, the next one's more tricky. The next one is that, well, we've still got Adwin Co. We know this Andre one is still outstanding and we're just hoping to get that money back soon. We've set automatic reminders, but unfortunately from Adwin Co, the company doesn't exist anymore. So we need to write these invoices off. Now, if I jump into the customer, you'll notice it's quite a substantial amount. So I don't want to get this wrong. I want to write this off in the right way. I want to make sure I get my VAT back if I'm VAT registered, and I want to make sure I get this as a bad debt relief. So for me to write this off, I need to follow these simple steps. The first one is, is to do a new transaction and a credit note. Credit note is opposite to an invoice, so it's basically saying we're not owed this anymore. I'm going to make it easy on myself. I'm going to do inclusive of tax, and I'm going to put the amount in just here. 20,200. I'm going to make sure my VAT is applicable and make sure you follow VAT rules to make sure you are able to claim this back. But in this case, I know I'm not going to get the money back. I've got to make a particular bad debt write off. And then this is the important thing from a product and service point of view, you've got to create a brand new one. So call it bad debt, call it a service, name is bad debt, description is write off. Bad debt, see attachment. And um, what I would always do is I'd put an attachment to why you're writing it off. Whatever proof you've got, is it the fact that they've gone under on company's house or you've had a letter to say you're not gonna receive the money? Whatever the reason's gonna be, always put as much proof as you can on this credit note. Then the key bit is your income account. You don't want it to go to sales, you want it to go to bad debt itself. And if you haven't got one already, you want to create an expense called bad debt. In my case, it's 20% and I press save and close. At this point, I press save and close. It's now going to written off everything for me and it's going to mark them all as paid. So now my overdue has gone down to zero. When I jump into my dashboard now, I scroll to the invo unpaid invoices and I have £1,000 overdue which is what I thought at the beginning was going to be the case. So we've gone through a lot there. We've looked at how possibility that you need to merge two accounts together, or you need to undo a transaction and apply the transaction correctly. So always keep a mindful eye out for that. Have you put the transaction in on the bank and just allocated it incorrectly? That's always gonna be your first point of call. Use that search bar to filter and find things. Once you have found them, either merge the account or undo and apply it as accordingly. Your other option or your other issue could be, we need to write off that transaction. When you do write off that transaction, you're gonna go into the customer, you're gonna create a service item called bad debts, and you're gonna put a credit note against that service item. That's then gonna write that transaction off and make sure from a VAT point of view and from a bad debt point of view in your account, you're gonna be claiming for them appropriately. And then finally, when it comes to chasing debts, make QuickBooks work for you. Utilize that option of using automatic reminders so that you can continue to ask for those automatic reminders without having you having to go in and lift a finger. With that in line, we have now got a nice clean creditors and we've got something we can understand as of today. And that's your most important bit. Make sure you can understand it today. If you can understand it today, you're in a much better place. If you're still unsure and you wanna have your records, your QuickBooks looked at, don't forget Boffix offers a really good service where what they do is they do a file review for you, all done online, all done by camera, just like we've shown you here. And they'll walk you through what they're checking, why they're checking it, and let you give confidence in your information. They send it to you as a video so you can go through in your own time, and then you can make the adjustments accordingly. So have a look at www.boffix.com. And also, if you are paying for QuickBooks, have a look at them as well. They'll be able to get you a better deal on your QuickBooks license. With that, it's been a pleasure to do this video for you. Hopefully you found this useful. And if you have, make sure you do a like, make sure you do subscribe, and let me know below if there's any other elements you want me to look into. My name has been Aaron Patrick. It's been a pleasure to do this video for you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.
know that it's real Cause I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's really new Even if we're staying bad My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him na, 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 na My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Productions. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks chat. Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description, but it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.